Sorry, Nelson, your turn. Yeah, I, I wanted to toss in some little historical snippets here. Maxwell died in the late 1870s, early 1880s, and it was only a couple of years later that Heinrich Kurtz managed to, to demonstrate the sending of signals via electromagnetic radiation, which was the precursor, of course, of radio. Also, uh, Maxwell's equations were very complicated, and there were a lot of them. And it was Oliver Heaviside who realized they could be unified into the standard four that now adorn t-shirts and textbook covers in physics. Uh, and that happened again, I think, in the 1980s, uh, 1880s rather. And there's an extensive bibliography of Clark Maxwell's publications in, in the BibNet project. Um, um, I'm just reflecting on how, uh, you know, Maxwell's equations definitely did change over time and not only gave rise to special relativity, but um, one of the triumphs of theoretical physics was expressing electricity and magnetism in a relativistically covariant way, which is um, uh, Paul Dirac's uh, work. And um, I'm delighted to have known Donald Knuth, but uh, I'm just uh, incredibly pleased to say that I met Paul Dirac in life. And um, it's recognized that, that this uh, relativistic formulation of uh, electricity and magnetism was uh, a terrific integration. Uh, and it's uh, kind of on a par with, uh, with uh, Maxwell's work which was a, a unified field theory of electricity and magnetism. Uh, and then later on, uh, we found a unified field theory of the electromagnetic and weak interaction, which is now a single unified theory. So um, I, I think that there's a, a, a deep, deep connection between Maxwell's work and uh, you know, modern physics. I've been making some notes along here. Uh, a couple of things about Maxwell is we, we really should be calling him James Clark Maxwell. His family name was really Clark in uh, two or three generations before. Uh, a Clark married a Maxwell. Uh, the Maxwell, of course, was the woman. And, but that family was wealthier and, and, uh, one of the requirements for the marriage was that, that Maxwell should become attached to Clark. And he never hyphenated <laughs> his name. Had he done so, we would always talk about the Clark-Maxwell equations. But he, he didn't hyphenate them. One of his colleagues did in occasional correspondence. But he always signed himself J. Clark Maxwell, not J.C. Maxwell. Um, uh, also, Maxwell was the first one to demonstrate color photography, and that's often forgotten. A lot of people think Kodak invented color photography, but that, that wasn't so. He actually demonstrated it before the Royal Society. 